Our first reading today comes from the book of Hebrews. Don't neglect to open your homes to guests, because by doing this, some have been hosts to angels without knowing it. And from 1 Corinthians, you are the body of Christ and parts of each other. And from Luke 14, when one of the dinner guests heard Jesus' remarks, he said to Jesus, happy are those who will feast in God's kingdom. Jesus replied, a certain man hosted a large dinner and invited many people. When it was time for the dinner to begin, he sent his servant to tell the invited guests, come, the dinner is now ready. One by one, they all began to make excuses. The first one told him, I bought a farm and must go and see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I bought five teams of oxen and I'm going to check on them. Please excuse me. Another said, I just got married so I can't come. When he returned, the servant reported these excuses to his master. The master of the house became angry and said to his servant, go quickly to the city streets, the busy ones and the side streets and bring the poor, crippled, blind and lame. The servant said, master, your instructions have been followed and there still is room. The master said to the servant, go to the highways and back alleys and urge people to come in so that my house will be filled. I tell you, not one of those who were invited will taste my dinner. This ends our scripture reading today. Yeah, that's why we're here. Why are you here today? We hope that you're here to put yourself all in, to give everything to Christ. Put Christ first. That's a, that's a problem with the world today. I truly believe, in my opinion, is it just it doesn't, you know, violence is a problem and all that, but, but the root cause is that we don't know where to place our priorities. And that's what we want to encourage you to do, to come to the banquet today, to lay all, everything before Christ and to receive the grace, the, the nourishment that, that he offers you. I want to start out with, uh, you know, I, I do like puns, I will admit it. I think Bill liked my puns from time to time. Some are better than others. But, you know, these ones today, they've got a point. Uh, what's, what's a good name? For a retired artist, Drew. <laughs> and the point being, retired artist. Is there such a thing as a retired Christian? Not even, folks. So don't think that you can retire. We still have a lot of work to do. 
we sometimes say, oh, the younger generation should take over. Well, you know, this is one of the things that we learned from that speaker was that, you know, this is the first time in history that there have been five generations in church. And it changes the dynamics of everything. You know, we used to have to wait until the older generation died off before we could take over and, you know, that kind of thing. And, and uh, you know, uh, we have to learn to get along together and to work together. And we, we can't do that if we retire. We need you. Christ needs you always. And so that's the point of the first pun. The second pun, I have to go back because I kind of forget. Okay, jokes about German sausage. They're the worst. <laughs> okay, the point being, we're, we're not necessarily the worst, but we are all in need of Christ's redemption and renewal, forgiveness and healing. And that gift is yours today. That's what we celebrate today on World Communion Sunday, on every Sunday. And the last one, I don't know if I should even, oh, I don't have one here. Oh, it's about broken pencils. Well, I don't have one, but they're pointless anyway, so. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no point to that one. God desires our hearts. You know, in the Jewish tradition, the Shema, Deuteronomy 6, 5, you should love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and strength. And Jesus added the word mind to that just to get everything in there to say everything that we have belongs to Christ. You shall love the Lord God with all of this. Let me see. I was going to read a little bit from my phone just because I saw all those fancy speakers down there in Kansas City doing it. Okay. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them when you're at home and when you're away and when you lie down and when you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand. Fix them as an emblem on your forehead. You've seen those Jewish folks with a little box on their foreheads. This scripture is in there. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. So that you see it when you leave the house and when you come home. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and mind and strength with your soul, with everything. That's what the banquet is all about. It truly is. The other scripture that we read today, 1 Corinthians 12, is that you are the body of Christ and parts of each other. That sounds a little mystical to me, doesn't it? You know, that's kind of the mystical tradition of Christianity, how we're parts of each other. Wow, I don't understand that. And, and that mystery tradition of the, of, of the Christianity is something that we've lost touch with, it seems like, because we've become such rational people. But, but you know, back in the 1900s, in the early 1900s, they would talk about the three mystery religions. And you know what they talked about? Judaism and Christianity and Islam, the three religions that worship one God, one God above all. Now today, if you think about mystery of religions, you might think of some of those Eastern traditions, right? You know, wrong. The mystery of Christ working with us, the mystery of Christ coming to us through Holy Communion and living in us and with it, uh, passing through us into the world. We are the ones that celebrate the mysteries of life. I want to move ahead and talk about the host. The host is throwing this party. And, you know, have you ever, like I said last week, for, you know, I used this line last week, but have you ever walked into a movie late and not known what's going on? You know, sometimes I feel that way in the world we live in today. I just, I don't understand how we've lost touch with the mystery of God because the host here, it's like somebody throws a party, a good friend of yours throws a party and, and why would somebody not go to the party? I just don't understand it. But here we have it. Uh, somebody invites you to a, a once in a lifetime kind of a party, you go. But here we see that he sends out the servants 
to invite them and they invite the friends, the insiders, the, the in crowd, they're all invited, they go. And you may, know, you may not have picked this up, but in verse 17, it, it makes it sound like they had already been invited. So they knew about this long in advance. But you know what? The servants go and they, they, they send them out at the last minute to say, okay, soup's on, come on, everybody come. You know, somebody at our house, somebody would have said, hey, come and get it before we throw it out, you know, all that kind of thing. It's just kind of a last minute thing. And, and you know what? They said, no. Even though the bank has been planned for a while, I don't think I want to take part. Well, it's time to take part of the fruits of all the work. It, why wouldn't they come? Well, I don't know if you guys remember this. I, I, I learned this a long time ago at, at camp when I first started working at camp as an adult, but there was a Lutheran gal, Sue, that taught us this song because we, we worked with people with disabilities. And, and uh, it's, I cannot come. And I don't remember the verses, thank God, because I'm only, only gonna sing, try to sing <laughs> the, uh, the, the chorus, but it, it goes, I cannot come. I cannot come to the banquet, don't bother me now. I have bought me, got me a wife, I have bought me a cow. I have fields and commitments that cost a pretty sum. Pray hold me, excused, I cannot come. Remember that one? Maybe some of you do, some of you don't. I only learned it as an adult, you know, it's just, but it, it wraps up everything in that scripture, doesn't it? The reasons that they gave. They're not really reasons, they're excuses. And it says so in scripture. Don't make excuses for not growing in your relationship with Christ. In their relationship, these guests were not all in. Were they? Their relationship was not, the friendship with the host was not a priority. They were using them as these reasons as an excuse to not be a part of the banquet, to not be a part of the kingdom of God on earth. The invitation. God is the inviter. God is the host. It's a pretty simple lesson to learn. And we servants, some of us are the servants, and you know, you can fit yourself into any one of these roles. You could be the servant, you could be the one that was invited first, or you could be the outsiders that were invited when nobody else would come. You know, there's times when we felt like every one of those roles, isn't it? The parables are wonderful that way. You can fit in everywhere. The servants are sent out to bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame, the outsiders, those who are hurting. Here we see it again. Jesus always went out of his comfort zone, or what we would assume his comfort zone would be, and we are asked to do the same. He was eating with sinners all the time. He said, healthy people don't need a doctor. I didn't come to call the righteous, but the sinners. The thing is that in Hebrews 13, Verse two, it says that by welcoming others, sometimes we have hosted angels and not even known it. You ever wonder about that? Sometimes it's good to invite. There's a guy, you may have heard of him, Garrison Keeler. okay. He said this one time, he said, for years people asked if I went to church. And I said, no. Then somebody asked if I wanted to go. I said, yes. And I liked it. Sometimes all it takes is a change in the way we word things. Do you wanna to come to church? Sure, a lot of people are gonna say no. We know, we all know that. But there's somebody out there that's gonna say yes. And you're gonna build a relationship. Why should we attend the party? You know, it's not a, it's not a casual invitation. We attend the party because Christ first loved us. And, and that's why we invite others. The kingdom of God, of love and forgiveness of life itself can be yours. They, there's a, a saying, that I want to repeat it. It's be kind. Because everybody you know is fighting a battle you know nothing about. We were down in Kansas City and, and Debbie's sister, Danelle, told this 
because I told her kind of what I was going to preach on about how we can reach out to each other. And, and she said she went to a, a, a church one time and, and uh, oh goodness, she had told a couple of stories. Uh, the first one is that her, her daughter, Megan, is severely, severely disabled and really can't control a lot of things. And they were sitting in church and, and the lady in front of them had a, a beautiful coat on, you know, I don't know if it was a mink coat or what, but, but Megan threw up on the lady in front of her in church. Can you imagine? The lady was angry. And that would be our first reaction, right? But she remained angry. And Danelle took the coat and, and, and cleaned it up and, and took it to the cleaners and, and she came, took it back to the lady's house. And she said the lady was still just furious. You know, it's, that's a tough situation. There's no doubt about it. Either side of it. You know, none of us wants to be in that situation. But I can tell you that Danelle did not go back to that church. Sometimes the things we say and the ways we act make a difference in a negative way. We never, never wanted them to. She also told a story of one time when the, the pastor of the church she was going to, uh, um, they, uh, they were encouraged to greet each other, kind of like I encourage you to greet each other and tell each other something good that's going on. <laughs> If, if you see somebody that you don't know, go ahead and greet them, welcome them to the church. And she said, she said, well, she's kind of an introvert, so she doesn't do those kind of things. And a lot of us are introverts, right? And she said, one day she worked up the courage and she went and talked to this young man that she'd never seen before. And he kind of looked at her and said, I'm the intern at the church. She didn't know. Again. It turned her off to that whole church community. I'm trying to say, folks, it makes a difference. And what I would like to give you as an assignment to do uh, in the coming week is to think about this. How do I talk with people? What do I share with people? And, and you know, we as a church, a year ago, we set a goal that we wanted to, to share Christ so well that in five years, our average age of us worshiping here together would be five years younger than it is now. Okay, now that's a wonderful goal. It's easy to measure. It's a mathematical goal in many ways, and, and it's harder for us to wrap our heads around. And so I want to give you another way to look at it. You know, it's not a very five and five and five. It's easy to remember, but it's, it's not a real inspiring thing. What I'd like you to do is to think about the way you share Christ. I, I'm gonna give you three questions that I would like you to find your answer for. Number one, why God? People out there wanna know, why God? Why do I need God? It's a very self-sufficient world, isn't it, that we live in? You know, I, I, I just discovered that I need God because I, I well, I, I was headed down the wrong path. You know, I, I would probably be um, nothing against geologists, but I would be a geologist in the oil field somewhere and probably drinking way too much today if it wasn't for God. So I know that God has made a difference in my life and I, I notice things about God, every, if not every day, every week. But you need to answer that in a way that you can tell people once you get to know them and once they ask. The second question to think about is why church? Why church? And I know that I need church because I need you. I need the love that you offer me and I need to love you as well. The support that I get and the challenges that you give me is, are just tremendous. The third thing to think about, why our church? Because I think it's important that, that we recognize the value of our own church. And, and this church, Bethlehem, I think that we are gonna be a beacon to this community. I really do, because there's churches way over here on the right and way over here on the left. And, and we, we Wesleyans, John Wesley held up the middle way, the way of Christ, the way, that, and, and not just a wishy-washy middle way, but he was passionate about it. 
that Christ finds a way to bring people together. And that is who we are. And we're going to lead this community into its future. I just know it if we allow the Spirit to work through us. I want to, I want to close by asking Janelle to come back up. And, and I want to read for you in parts uh, a conversation between a friend of mine and his little daughter. Because I think it's so inspiring. I'm probably going to break down in the middle of it. It's, it's just so, so neat. But, but this is a friend of mine uh, who reflects the kingdom of God. And, and Tim, um, Tim is a guy that was abused by people in the church. His parents were pastors at a church that I served in South Dakota. And Tim today is a seminary teacher in Evanston, Illinois. An amazing young man that came back from a really troubled time. But on Facebook, he puts his conversations with his kids. And I just want to let you hear this one. Good night, Audrey. Good night, Dad. Love you. Love you more. Love you most. Love you more than most. Love you to the moon and back. Love you to the moon and back a thousand times plus 500 plus one. Love you to the moon and back forever. Love you as big as the biggest city. Love you as big as the biggest cities. Love you as big as all the biggest cities forever. Ah, uh, really? Me? That's so sweet. <laughs> Did you know that love comes from God? Oh, that's me. Did you know <laughs> that love comes from God? <laughs> no problem. We didn't rehearse for No, all. no. <laughs> Love is even bigger than ours. Bigger than ours forever and ever. Does that mean God is sad when I'm sad? Well, what do you think? I think so. I think so too. Jesus is a real live person, you know? Yeah, I know. I think he probably lives in those cities. That sounds right. He died, you know? Yeah, I know. But he's coming back in, to life again in December. Uh, well, he died once, and then he was raised to life, and now he lives forever and won't die again. We celebrate his birth in December. Yeah, I know. For, well, that's you. Forever? Forever. And that's why he's always there with you, especially when you're sad. In my heart? Yeah, in your heart. And in those cities? And in those cities. Good night, Dad. Good night, Audrey. Simple conversations with those we love, with those we don't know. That's how the kingdom is expressed through you.